This video is going to be a little bit of a detour, but it's an important one because it will help you understand some of the concepts that are necessary to understand evolution a little bit better. I told you yesterday that the uh, idea of perfection as a goal to which evolution is striving is in fact an incorrect idea. But we're not quite ready to abandon it yet because it will help us to illustrate something of what goes on in evolution. I do want you though to take on board the point that I made yesterday. The point that evolution is a cumulative process. It takes you onward from where you already are. It, it cannot give you something for which there is no basis or for which no foundation has been laid, so to speak. So if we look again at the whole idea of perfection, evolution as a process that is trying to achieve some form of perfection, you can picture that very simply as having this perfection idea over here and the starting point down there and an, like I said yesterday, an inexorable march from one to the other. But, imagine now that perfection is not a single idealistic goal, but that there are different types of perfection that might be achievable, and that this changes over time. So, at one point, you have this goal to achieve. A while later, you have that goal. Yet another while later, you've got this goal. And yet, a bit later on, you've got that one. And imagine that all that time, something is evolving, trying to get towards that goal. And imagine every time the goal changes, a new type of perfection is going to be presented as it needs to achieve, it needs to therefore change direction, go somewhere else. Just out of facetiousness, I'm going to show you something that it might end up resulting in. Even though each individual goal may seem perfection, because of the fact that evolution keeps on moving from where it is at a certain point in time, all it can do is then change direction, move on from where it was, carry on in a new direction, and so on and so forth, and the end result is something like this. And it isn't pretty. Now, eventually we're going to abandon the whole idea of perfection anyway, but this is a good way of thinking about it right now. And that it isn't completely ridiculous in real life can be seen in examples like these. For example, if you look at whales, whales have the bone structures for hind legs. What is a big whale going to do with those bone structures? You see, when a whale moved, the whale's ancestors moved into the new aquatic environment, it needed to develop a body form that was more suitable to an aquatic lifestyle. But it could only move forward from where it was at, which was a quadrupedic body plan. And that is why a whale ultimately still has this quadrupedic body plan underlying its more streamlined form for living in the water. And that's why a whale skeleton still has these vestigial hind legs. The same with a snake, for example. Compare a snake over here to a human being over here, and you will see that there are corresponding structures in their skeletons. Specifically, some types of sna snakes still have vestigial pelvises, 
or hind legs. Again, completely useless to a snake, but which shows, shows us that when the snake ancestors moved into this new direction towards a body plan that was more suitable to the snake lifestyle, it had to do this starting from the same body plan that we started from. And as a result, it is now lumbered with these vestigial organs. The same for human beings. We have the um, appendix, which is of absolutely no use to us. So, as you can see, many different beings have different vestigial organs, which are remnants of the fact that we evolve from uh, shared ancestors with a basic body plan that we've all inherited. Other examples, for example, are is another good example is the human or mammalian eyeball. Look at the human eyeball, and the first thing you'll notice is that it seems to be of a particularly bad design. In particular, it has this thing called a blind spot. And this is something that is absolutely unnecessary. The reason why we have a blind spot is because our optical nerve comes from the back, goes into the eye, and then connects to the optical uh, cells, the cells in the retina, the light sensitive cells, back to front. Why is that the case? Because evolution had gone down that road before the ancestors of ours that didn't have eyes, but were in the process of evolving eyes, before that went on to the road of devolving actual eyes. Once this particular thing was in place, this particular way of wiring um, the light sensitive cells to the brain, it couldn't be reversed. Evolution had to move on from that position. And that is why we humans end up with basically back to front eyes. It could have been so different. If we had been uh, cephalopods like um, squid or octopus, we could have had much better designed eyes because their eyes have been designed more or less the right way around. Lucky little creatures. But we ended up with our type of eyes and we're stuck with it. All of this is evidence for evolution. Creationists use the term devolution, but it makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. It makes a lot more sense to look at these vestigial organs and all these types of um, structures that we have in our bodies as remnants from earlier body plans that are now no longer necessary, are in the way. And it also makes sense to look at this as the result of a process that is continuously changing direction. And in my following videos, I'm going to explain where that comes from. And with perfection, it has nothing to do whatsoever.